How's it going out there? Just thought I'd uh, shoot a little quick video tonight. I say quick. I don't know how long it's going to be because I don't have a topic, and that's where I get into trouble. I want to have me a cigar tonight. See if I can make that focus a little on it. I don't think it's going to. This is an H. Upman that uh, Friedrich from. Let's see if I can get some more light there. That Friedrich from Sweden sent me. So. This is H. Upman Habana Cuba is the only thing it says on there, but that's all it needs. have my Zycar cutter here that I'm going to snip the end off of. A little piece of tobacco. It's got a good... Got a good cold draw, good taste to it. I'm gonna light this with a cedar spill tonight. And my daughter's lighter, how's that? That'll be one way to uh, use that lighter to, I say my daughter's lighter, the one that she gave me. Tell you what, let me turn it around and get it. Oh, it's a little bit windy out here. This is not a lighter for when it is windy out. So we'll see if we can get this going. So thank you very much, Friedrich. Oh boy, it is windy. You don't see, it doesn't seem that windy until, until you're trying to do something like this. Trying to get a nice little toast on it here, but it's not that easy to do. Mmm, I think we're starting to look pretty good there. Watch this hand if it's got fire in it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Clean some of the dust and the ashes off my computer here. That is nice. That is smooth. Friedrich, uh, if you saw my Yapo, my Sweden, Yapo from Sweden, I can't remember what I titled that video, but you saw that uh, amongst the other stuff that he sent me three cigars and um, ones that I can't buy here in the United States for some crazy reason. That is delicious. Even in that first 30 seconds of an inch, that is pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy this all the way through. So, this is uh, Monday night. I'm not for sure uh, when you'll see this. Tomorrow's my day off. And it actually worked out pretty good this time. Most of you know that I work on call, and once they call me, I work a 12 to 15 hour shift. Tuesday is my day off. What makes it not quite as fun is when they call me Tuesday night at 10, 11. I mean, excuse me, Monday night at 10 or 11. So I work all night through, don't get off till 10, 11, 12, 13, you know, 1 o'clock Tuesday. Spend Tuesday afternoon sleeping, go back on call Tuesday night at midnight, Wednesday morning. I don't get much of a day off, so this time they actually called me at uh, 4 o'clock this morning. So I got off, able to come home, have a cigar, get a good full night's rest, and, uh, and get me some sleep tonight. And then, tomorrow...
any of you guys aren't doing anything and just want to come have some fun with me, we've been working on my mom's house. So in her entryway, as you come in the front door, there's like a little entryway. And it's this older house, so it's not the open concept, open floor plan. So she's got an entryway, then you got a hall that goes off to the bedrooms, bathroom, or you come straight into the living room, around the corner, into the dining room and kitchen. Well, that entryway had wallpaper on there and popcorn ceiling. So I thought, well, she wants it redone, painted. So I thought this would be in the whole house, every ceiling in that entire house. If there's a place for two inches of ceiling or a hundred feet of it, it's popcorn ceiling. So I thought, well, this would be a good place. This little probably, I don't know, six, eight foot by 12 foot space would be a good place to test getting that popcorn ceiling off of there. So I scraped the popcorn ceiling off and it worked excellent. As long as your popcorn ceiling has never been painted, it'll come off pretty easy. Just take a spray bottle. I just took a little hand spray bottle with water and got it wet. Took a knife, putty knife, you know, like a mudding knife, something like that, and scraped it off, and it came off and clean as a whistle as it could be underneath there. So it's ready to paint. Um, on the walls, there was wallpaper. So we go take the wallpaper off wallpapers on top of paneling and slick and some decorative paneling not like the old wood you know looking brown paneling and it that paneling is slick as it can be so it's like well you're not gonna be able to paint on the paneling so there's no reason to strip the wallpaper off we just strip the paneling off and throw it out we strip the paneling off what do we find underneath not drywall Some type of chipboard, kind of like that wood chip sawdust, wax and glue stuff that's been pressed together. The entryway walls, for whatever reason in this house, have that all the way around. You can't paint, well, you can't paint on that and make it look good anyway. If, you're, if it was a barn or something like that, you know, it might. You know, the cows might not mind the way it looks, but... So we go to look behind that. Is there anything behind it? Well, you got studs and you know insulation and wiring. So we just went and got sheetrock, uh, thin sheetrock, like 16th sheetrock or 8th sheetrock, and put it up on the walls all the way around that entryway. Of course, then you tape and mud and sand. We we typically tape mud, let it dry, mud, let it dry sand, mud it, let it dry, sand it, mud it, let it dry, sand it, well I'm in the sanding stages. And that's probably the part I hate the most on this kind of stuff. So anyway, so it's gonna be a just a dirty, tiring job. So I've got I've got about a quarter of it sanded, and so oh, we're out here at night, got the lights on, got all these bugs flying around now. Um, I did about a quarter of the sanding, so I'm going to finish sanding it tomorrow, and then re-mud, see where it needs to be re-mudded. And then if I can do a halfway decent job, I'm hoping maybe I can wet sand it and be done with it. If not... I'll sand it again and hopefully that'll be the last sanding and then I can go over it with, you know, a light sponge, kind of kind of a wet sand sponge over the entire area just to get as much of that uh, drywall dust out of there as possible. This is good, Friedrich. This is a delicious stick. I've had H. Upman's before and I've liked them, but I've never had an H. Upman coming directly from a little island south of Miami, so. Yeah, this is good. I do enjoy this. I like this stick. So anyway, that's what I'll be doing tomorrow, and I can't do any of that. See, when I'm on call, as soon as I come off of a rest break, 
depending on how busy everything is. I may be off of a rest break for two minutes and get a call, two hours and get a call, 10, 15, 20 hours and get a call. You just don't know, and so I can't start any of this. I can call in and find out where on the call board I am. Am I number two? Am I number 22? But there's been times I've been, say, number 16 on the list. Oh, well, I got plenty of time. You go to the grocery store an hour later, you're getting a call. Sometimes I've been number four. Twelve hours later, I'm still number four. So that's what makes it. But that's what makes it hard is you just don't have a regular. You can't really expect, you know, what's going on. Here lately, they've been keeping us pretty busy. And so, and I was talking to one of the uh, supervisors the other day. Uh, she was out running a call. <clears throat> so we were both up there at the depot picking up crews at the same time. And so, um, and it was, of course, in the middle of the night. And I told her, <clears throat> I said, I don't know how many nights they call you on, but it seems like I work one day and then ten nights. One day and then ten night overnight. You know, they'll call me at ten o'clock at night, two in the morning, three in the morning, four in the morning, and make runs. And I said, I can't believe we have all of these, because we've got, I don't know, 25, 30 drivers. No, we, we've got more than that. Because I remember I was talking to the, the main manager the other day. He said we had, I think he said we had 36, and they want us to get up to 50 drivers. That way, because you're coming on and off rest, you know, you got to have enough rested drivers to be able to run all the time. And they want us to have 50 drivers. But I said, we got all these drivers. I can't believe they're all on rest at night and off rest during the day. And she knew what I was getting at. I said, I can tell you what's happening. I said, these people who don't want to work at night, they're trying to make their own schedule. When they get a call, they just don't answer the phone. And then that automatically puts them back on rest for eight hours. And then in the morning, they're off rest and they get a call. And she says, yep. I, she says, we're aware of that. And there's getting ready to be a bunch of people go away. So that ought to help the situation. But since I said that, I said, it sounds like you've got these people identified why don't we put those of us, you know, because there's a, you know, a good majority of us who will work and work at any time and go any place. And I said, there's a good majority of us that will do that. Oh, sorry, my computer light just went out and I bounced everything to uh, turn it on. <clears throat> I said, can't you just bump us to the top of the list? And it was a call list. And she didn't kind of, she didn't say anything, but she... She kind of grinned. She knew where I was getting at. And so ever since then, the past two or three days, I've been getting I mean, getting calls. I ran a call. We've got a depot. See what happens when I don't have an agenda or a, a specific topic to talk about? We've got a depot about two hours, almost exactly two hours west of us. Now, that is a very small depot. They've got six or seven drivers and that's about it but that's typical they might be able to use 10 and so they call me uh to go make a pickup three and a half hours west from my depot so i got to drive through that town in two hours and then another hour and a half on I said, do they not have any drivers available? Or she says, yeah, they've got like one driver whose wife is in the hospital, one driver's on vacation. That only leaves them like four drivers. And, you know, two drivers are out on calls, and then the other two are not off arrest yet. She says, they'll be coming off arrest, but they're not off arrest. I said, she says, do you mind going out there? Said, Shoot, no. I get paid to drive, so I'll go anywhere. I don't care whether it's two miles or two thousand miles just let me drive and so I drive out there and of course I don't have maps directions or anything for that location because that's not our area we don't drive there they just told me go to this town and then start they'll be on you know radio channel whatever one two three four and see if you can raise them and see where they are. So I call them on the radio two or three times. I can't find them. So I pull up the satellite on my phone, satellite image of the map. 
And, you know, I'm looking, I said, okay, if they are here, the most logical place for them, to, because you zoom it in, and you can not only see, of course, roads, but you can see train tracks, and you can see where there's double tracks. So where a track comes in, it splits double, goes, and then goes back to one and takes off out of town or wherever. So well, here, in between this point and this point is the most logical place for them to be. So I go drive that entire link, nothing, can't get them on the radio, can't get them on the radio. So I call back and say, they're not here. I said, I can tell you what happened. I said, somebody's came off of rest, and they didn't have a order to go pick up those guys, but they had an order to take fresh crew out, and they've come out here, dropped the fresh crew off, and found out, hey, there's still guys on this train. And the guys on the train are going to say, well, yeah, our pickup van never showed up. Now, nobody ever said that, but I know what happened. And so two, I sat there for two hours, called them several times, had to try to get a hold of the, the railroad, and finally, they never said anything except, okay, you're released, they're not there, go back to Tulsa. So I drive, I drove three and a half hours out there, set for two hours, drive three and a half hours back. So basically on duty for nine hours, and I know I'm not going to get an incredibly short run, so I call in so they can put me on rest in the computer. So I should be going on an eight-hour rest. By the time I finish up all my paperwork with the office, get home, it takes about a half hour to do that. And by the time I do that and get home, go to bed, two hours of sleep, and they call me and say, uh, we've got a 12-hour run in the two-hour away hub. I said, you realize I've only been on rest for two hours? Or I've only two and a half hours. I've been asleep for two hours. And she's like, well, I'm just looking at the computer. The computer shows you're fully rested and you're available for up to a 15-hour shift. I said, well, you know, and it, it almost sounded like she was getting a little defensive, like I might be accusing her. So I said, you know, hey, I don't, I'm not have, I don't have a problem with it because the more I drive, the more money I make. Now, it's piddly money. That's why I've got to drive every single mile and work every single minute I possibly can. You know, I think I've said this before that uh, looking at my paycheck and looking at my wife's paycheck, I work over twice as many hours as she does and get paid just a little bit less than she does. So I'm making less than half she does. So, but, you know, hey, this is, this is what I call my gateway job. So anyway, so this 12-hour shift is in it at two hours away. So I've got to drive two hours, start a 12-hour shift, be done with a 12-hour shift, and drive two hours back. So it's, doing the math, 16-hour shift. And again, now on, a shift, on that shift, the only reason I took that shift was because there's going to be a lot of waiting time, and I could do some sleeping. I know uh, Southern Experience made a video, I don't know, maybe last week, and, you know, guys, I'm watching videos when I can. Sometimes, like when I was out there, I couldn't get, I didn't have any coverage, so I couldn't even watch videos on my phone. So, I read a book and slept. So, I am watching videos when I can. I make comments when I can. But, you know what, I may watch a video. It may be two days old. It may be two months old. Most of the time, I don't even know what day it is. I barely know whether it's morning or night anymore. And so, anyway, um... Where was I going with that? Now I got off on a rabbit trail. <clears throat> I didn't stick a pin in it. I know you're reminding me, but... So I was running a 16-hour shift. Okay, I totally lost it. Anyway, that's going to drive me crazy now. But I'm not going to spend five minutes here trying to figure out what it was. I'm going to take a drink of my iced tea no sugar this is real iced tea not that sweet and stuff some of you guys drink look at that guys that is a great cigar wish I could figure out how to get a couple of boxes of these over here without ending up in some jail somewhere. I wouldn't end up in jail. It's just some customs guy would have him a couple of boxes of free cigars, what would happen. So anyway, guys, 
I still can't think of it. I know you guys are reminding me. I'll have to go back and watch it. It's going to drive me crazy until I figure out what I was talking about and I got lost. So if, I don't know where I was going, but if, you know, they would have called me and said, oh, I got it. Southern Experience made a video. And I was saying, uh, now nah, it's going to take even longer. I'm already at 20 and a half minutes. Southern Experience made a video, and again, I don't know whether it was two days ago or two weeks ago or whatever, two hours ago, <clears throat> talking about driving and how much we drive. And the way my job works, I never know. It, and it seems like it comes in waves. I may work two or three weeks where I just drive, 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 drive nonstop. Then I may work a week or two weeks where I drive, wait, 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 drive, wait, 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 wait. So I may work a 15-hour shift and put on 100 miles. You just never know. It just depends on what kind of shift you're getting called for. And so I like the shifts where I drive, 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 drive. I typically don't make any more money. I figured, you know, I've done the I've done the math on this. And if I do a 12-hour shift where I do zero driving and get paid, the way I get paid and we keep these logs is when we are waiting on something to happen. They say, okay, your shift starts at whatever, 8 o'clock at location A with crew A. We log it on a sheet. 8 o'clock, I'm here and I'm waiting. Okay, at whatever, 8.15, I'm driving. At, you know, 3 o'clock, I'm stopped driving, I'm waiting. At 4 o'clock, I'm driving. And so we keep track of all that. So while we're stopped, we're getting paid by the hour. While we're driving, we switch over and we're paid by the mile only, not both. And I figured it out. If I were to wait, no, drive zero miles in a 12 hour shift, get paid by the hour, oops, sorry guys, or I were to drive for a solid 12 hours, of course, now, we're hauling crew, so we can't drive solid 12 hours. We have to stop at 10. But let's say, let's say I was able to drive a solid 12 hours. I might get paid a tiny, tiny bit more, not enough to make a difference. So it really doesn't make a difference to me. I enjoy the driving more. And where we drive, a lot of times, like I'm going to, I've uh, uploaded, I've already uploaded a video. I've got it scheduled to hit in a couple days maybe, so I don't know when you'll see it. But it'll hit before this one where I kind of show you where we are out in the middle of nowhere. A lot of times that's where we're driving. And, you know, I get to see places I've never seen before. You know, you can live in this area for all of your life. And then, you, you know, you drive someplace and it's like, wow, I never even knew this place existed. Because we get off the beaten path. So anyway, guys, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to cut it short. So I don't know whether you hung out or not, but hey, guys, I appreciate it. I appreciate you watching all your comments and likes. And now I'm getting the, uh. Now I've got you a longer video, so I'm up there with, you know, uh, with Bones and Louisiana Pipe Guy and Guy Witherspoon and T.L. Belknap. I'm trying to outdo T.L. Belknap. I'm at 23.45 right now, so that's it, guys. I'm going to take off. I'm going to finish enjoying this cigar. I think I will go tap this ash off before it does land in my lap or on my computer keyboard, which I have had happen before. Thank you so much, Friedrich. This is a delicious cigar. I do. Mm, I can't wait to try the other two. I've had this sitting in the humidor for whatever two or three, two or three weeks now, kind of letting it get acclimated. So that's it, guys. I'm gonna take off. I'm not gonna take off. I'm gonna get rid of you guys. I'm gonna sit right here, lean back, enjoy my uh, cigar and some iced tea. So thanks, guys. I appreciate it. We'll catch y'all next time.